All right, no big box this time around. Just you and me, baby. We're talking something newish, like a couple months old, not, not retro. We're just not, it's not a retro game today. So, sorry. The Judge Mathis channel has primarily been a way for me to look back at old games, primarily PC games and ones I missed out growing up with, and a few tossed in that I played and loved. Every so often, maybe a console game or an unreleased game gets thrown in the mix. It's been my favorite excuse to play things I've always wanted to, but never had the time for. But most importantly, the reason I really created Judge Mathis is to share my utter love and adoration for video games as a whole. And while older games are kind of my focus, I always said if something came around that completely took me off guard and I felt the absolute need to share, I would do so without hesitation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that time has come. Incoming first world problem warning though. Having been doing YouTube for well over five years now and professionally for about three, Rarely does a game come along that I play for more than a month, and even less so to completion. I'm bombarded by multiple games a day in my email, and the truly standout ones become more and more infrequent among all the different ones I end up playing daily. Sure, there are lots of good ones, but the great ones? The instant classics? Man, those become hard to find. I'm not saying this as a humble brag. But Mothus, you get so many great games every day. Complain some more about your privilege. It's just to set up the context for what I'm about to say next. Hollow Knight is, in my opinion, an instant classic. Whew, all right, all right, let that sink in. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know, it's a lot to take in. Pretty big assertion to make, too. And I don't say it often about new games, either. It takes a lot for me to love a game so much. But Hollow Knight, who boy, did Hollow Knight dig its mandibles into me hard and fast. You know what I'm saying? Hard and fast, you know what I'm saying? Sex joke. Sex joke. But Hollow Knight is an absolute must play. It is one of the games I'll always point to from here on out when people speak about Kickstarter successes and why indie games are absolutely going to continue to thrive in this new digital age. I'll admit though, when talking about Hollow Knight and trying to explain it to people, I found it came off kind of boring. Well, Mathis, what is Hollow Knight? Why, why, my good friend? It's a 2D Metroidvania where you kill bosses, explore, unlock new abilities to explore more areas, and to kill more bosses to get more abilities. Wow, that sounds absolutely mundane. You couldn't be more wrong, my friend. You couldn't be more wrong. But you know what? Let's just dive into Hollow Knight and hopefully it'll just all make sense. We open up with some vague poem that we're left to kind of interpret and a small goddamn adorable little guy who will be playing as we jump down a cliff and make our way into an almost completely abandoned and forgotten little town. Here you'll meet a few NPCs who ask you if you're also here to explore the ruins of a once great kingdom, immediately inferring that you certainly aren't the first nor would you be the last to come here. Within moments, the mood is set. It's dark and dreary. A lone piano belts out some moody and melancholic music, and everything feels like it's on the cusp of death, and it all immediately weighs on you. Questions begin to pop into your head almost immediately. Who are you? What are you here for? Why does the world look like it's barely standing, and why is everyone in town so okay with it? This game within minutes is immediately racking your brain with lots and lots of questions. Questions you want answers to. And it's almost all visually presented. Conversations are kept light, text to a minimum. Characters only ever speak in vague sentences, assuming the character you're playing already knows all of this. And he might, he just never says a word. You're left to wander, explore, poke and prod at the world around you before deciding to descend into what was once a great insect kingdom. Oh, right, did I mention this is all taking place in a world of bugs? It doesn't really matter though, not really. It could be bugs, humans, ghosts, aliens from Mars, it doesn't really matter. The story would largely remain the same. The bug motif exists purely to add some interesting monster and boss designs to the world, and even then, a lot of them don't even really look like insects. After a quick exploration of the town, you'll jump into a well and your quest begins. What's your quest? Why are you here exactly? Well, 
Good question. You don't really know. At least you, the player, doesn't. Your character, however, small as he or she may be, looks determined, fights like they've always known how, and characters will address you as though you're here for a reason. And outside of the questions about the world and the city, you're now wondering, what am I doing here? From here, gameplay will find a familiar loop, if you've played any Metroidvanias anyway. Explore a zone, fight a boss, get new abilities, go to explore new areas, fight another boss, get new abilities. You've done it all before. It's a tried and true formula, and it's done excellently here. Combat is tough and punishing, but fair, forcing you to learn enemy patterns and adapt as your abilities come trickling in. Especially the boss fights. Each boss fight is unique and difficult in their own right, oftentimes beating you into submission over and over and over again until something within you clicks and you utterly destroy the boss and question why it was so hard for you in the first place. It's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. Oh, I got him. Oh, I got him. Heal, 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 heal. Holy shit, I got him. You'll wander the world, collect pieces of things to make your health bigger or to make your soul pool larger, which is what you'll use to heal yourself. And with each boss beaten, small tiny bits of lore and information come trickling in, answering some questions that you may have or giving you just enough of a hook to keep pulling you forward without wanting you to stop. Mix that in with the environmental clues and lore tidbits you'll find around, and it had me chomping at the bit wanting to know more about the world and this weird plague that had completely destroyed the entire world and kingdom, teasing it all out until the very end, and holy sh**. This game is Dark Souls. I mean, it's not actually Dark Souls, but it's Dark Souls. It's more Dark Souls than any Dark Souls like I've ever played. So many Dark Souls clones try and imitate the difficulty, but lose touch as to what makes the series so good. They learn all the wrong lessons. They want to be hard, hardcore, difficult for being difficult sake. And while difficulty is definitely part of the Souls experience, which isn't lost here on Hollow Knight, what makes Souls so unique is the way it presents itself filled with mysteries and questions and a world worth exploring and learning, topped with a combat system that could and does stand well enough on its own. Hollow Knight is refined, difficult, worth playing for its well-done Metroidvania system by itself, but what pulls you, what has you continuing even through some of its lulls, is its weird, nearly dead, mysterious world and characters. You want to know what drives them, what causes its downfall, and what drives your character. You'll get enough answers to satisfy them, be introduced to new questions to keep you going, and it's so masterfully done. This is what other Dark Souls imitators should be trying to do. This is what makes Dark Souls so dang good. Pay attention, developers! And I could sit here and gush about it for a while, but I wouldn't be doing you any a service if I didn't tell you some of the downfalls of the game. Not that there are many, it's just who I am. I have to nitpick. There are a few things I dislike about it, and I'm going to address them here relatively quickly. The first thing that comes to mind is, I think, a pitfall of a lot of the games within the genre. The middle portion of the game tends to slow down pretty drastically. It usually happens when you have a bunch of new abilities, unsure of how they help you progress, and need to go back to some very early zones and just wander around looking for the right place to use these new powers to find a new area. Those in-between few hours can drag as you wander from place to place in a huge map that often you can get lost in while you try and figure out just where the game wants you to go. And sometimes the new areas you find end up being optional and lead to dead ends that don't push you in the right direction. The other bit that really ended up bothering me, and I, I mean really ended up bothering me, and was almost completely out of place for the entire game and the way it was designed, was a zone you actually need to go through for the good ending, or what a lot of people are calling the correct or true ending. And that's what's known as the White Palace. And boy, let me tell you about the White Palace. Most of Hollow Knight is designed really well. Levels will get progressively harder, early zones will teach you how the world is going to work, only to make those little obstacles that taught you how the world is going to work more difficult later on. It's a natural difficulty curve, but the White Palace is a little different. First of all, it has running buzzsaws the entire time. Buzzsaws that don't make 
any sense in the context of the world or lore, which is fine, all right? I'll accept it. I'll swallow it a little bit. But the other difficulty part is that there are no checkpoints anywhere throughout the puzzle that you need to go through. And you will die over and over and over again until you run out of health and get sent to the very beginning of that area where the last checkpoint was, which is at the very beginning of the puzzles. And the puzzles require incredibly precise platforming. Platforming, mind you, that was not required through the entire other 30 hours of the game. Platforming that suits Meat Boy. Now, a lot of people are like, well, man, just get good, Mathis. Get good at the game. Why don't you just get good, Mathis? Listen, that's not the point. I don't mind difficult platforming. That's part of it. Meat Boy does it really well. The difference between this and Meat Boy is that Super Meat Boy lets you see the level. You can sight read, you can see the challenges that are coming up, but the way the camera is presented in Hollow Knight does not let that happen. You have to learn via trial and error. You can't see some of the difficult parts coming up until you've already died to them. That type of precise platforming only works in a game that lets you sight read, learn the level, and try after you've already seen it. Super Meat Boy does it fantastically. Hollow Knight, don't get me wrong, I love Hollow Knight. I've already kind of said how much I love Hollow Knight. Doesn't let you see the level until you've already died a thousand times. And God forbid, you've died like four times. You've learned four of the obstacles coming up. And you're like, oh my God, I must have done it. I, I, I know where all the obstacles are. I'll be good. You do it. You jump through. You hit those precise, and I do mean pinpoint precise platforming tricks, only to be smacked in the face by another buzzsaw coming off screen that you have no time to react to and have to do it all over again. It can be made a little easier with a couple of the charms you can attach, but I'm just saying, that shouldn't be necessary. Your skill should be what gets you to the end, not charm cheating. But beside that, everything in this game quite simply clicks. And when it's firing on all cylinders, there's really no experience out there right now that can match it within its own genre. And you owe it to yourself to play Hollow Knight. And the topper, the kicker, the icing to it all, it's only $15, and it's beautiful. And that wraps it up. Go play Hollow Knight. It's as simple as that. The game is worth every minute you put into it, and I cannot praise it any more than I have. So that is why I, the Honorable Judge Mathis, judge this game as innocent. Innocent of being terrible. No, it's just, it's so good. Just play it. For the love of God, play it. It's just one of those success stories that comes around maybe once a year at most. It is worth just checking out and loving it, especially if you're a fan of the Metroidvania style of game with a Dark Souls twist. It's such a weird sell and it sounds so weird talking about it in that way, but that's just what the game is and it's worth it for you to go check it out. So my question to you is simple. What's your favorite Metroidvania game? There's so many out there and there are a ton of good ones and some bad ones. So I wanna know what your favorite is in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna be gone in the next couple days heading to MomoCon and if you're there, come say hi. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed what Hollow Knight looked like, you can swing over to my gameplay channel. I did a full series on the game from start to finish for you to check out. If you want to watch another Judge Mathis, there are plenty to watch. Just click on the link right here and make sure you follow me on all the socials and subscribe here and on Twitter and hit the bell if you're already subscribed. Listen, you know the spiel already.